Also, yes, I know my hair is wet and I look kind of wild right now, but my hair is pretty thick. doesn't look like it right now, but it is. So when I blow dry it, I look more like a clown than I do a person. So we're going to let it air dry because I have a lot to film today. All right, today we're doing men writing women. And before anybody's in the comments like, well, what about women writing men? Th that's not good either. They do bad too. Yeah, I've made a video on that. So there you go. <laughs> All right, let's jump into it. 1992, to be a man is a sin. To take a woman is a crime. The feminists. They rule the world and top dog is a bitch. A small band of men and their women go underground to fight the final battle of the sexes. So this is like obviously the front summary for a book by Parley J. Cooper. And it's basically imagining if women ruled the world and men had to go underground to fight women. I love how they had to throw in the, and Top Dog is a bitch. They had to make sure that you knew that women were bitches starting strong. A small band of men and their women go underground. Okay, so the men have their pick -me's. <laughs> A group of men and their pick -me's go underground. Nah, girls supporting girls, what are they doing? Go up there and serve your fucking duties as top bitch. It's like a civil war of the sexes. It's like if middle schoolers that are deep, deep, deep in their men versus women phase gained political control. <laughs> the feminists, but the writing is so pretty. Like the feminist writing is so pretty. Um, obviously this is supposed to be a take on how feminism is bad and feminism is gonna, gonna do to end of world. Everybody going to die cause women get period and start war. <laughs> Look at her, she looks like she's killing it. So what's special about today's episode is we have some things from film, not just book. Reminder that Tarantino wrote a scene in Dusk Till Dawn where Salma Hayek pours tequila down her leg and forces a guy to drink it by sucking on her toes and then cast himself in that role. <laughs> oh my, get it together, get it together, get it together. <coughs> this is absolutely something Tarantino would do. Tarantino has done quite a few things that are questionable in the film industry. And listen, I'm not, I'm not a feet person. Sorry, not gonna shame y'all that are. Enjoy your toe suckles. I'm just personally not. I'm sorry, it's like funny, but it's not funny because he's like using his power over her to be put in a position where he can suckle on her toes. But it's also like, he's using his power to suck her toes. Um, I feel so bad for women in the fucking Hollywood industry, the movie, the movie industry, because they're, they're constantly being taken advantage of in ways like this that most of the public won't see or question. Because when you're watching the movie, most of you are not going to know that he did that, that he wrote that and then cast himself. And, you know, I don't know him personally, but I think we can put two and two together and say it's most likely just because he wanted to suck on her toes. Hi, Skipper. Speaking of feet people, Skipper loves feet, loves sniffing toes. He, he is a toe sniffer to the max. I have friends over, they take their shoes off, they got their socks on, and he's like, give me those toes. This just in, Skipper casts himself in role of sniffing friends' feet. <laughs> no, Harry whispered. Styles? Nar. <laughs> Sorry, that's Australian. Nar. That's Australian. No. How do the British say no? How to say no in British English. No, Harry whispered with the last air he had left in his lungs. Logan's not an end. Could you? He looked up at her, saw her dark eyes fill with tears. It's my period, she whispered. I love how dramatic this feels. It's like she's confessing a deep, dark, like, secret in the way she says it. It's my period. It sounds like, like somebody's telling somebody about their terminal illness, but it's actually just their period. I got the report back from the doctors. It's my period. No, love, <laughs> I can't believe it. I feel like men envision periods as this like murderous, monstrous thing that takes over a woman and makes her a complete monster for a week. And don't get me wrong, hormones are definitely a thing. Like our hormones definitely change, but I feel like the exaggeration that men often think it is, is like, heightened like you remember the feminists that we just read and how i made a joke about oh she'll be on her period and bomb us like that's that's the vibe that men give that's an actual argument men have given for why women shouldn't be put into an, a position of power is periods so it's just it's just silly little side notes madison had shoulder length blonde hair and was wearing a yellow summer dress with hundreds of little orange gold fists printed on it oh cute even in flip-flops, she was model tall, and I could tell that the soles of her feet would be so fucking soft. She had a perfect nose, blue eyes, enough freckles to look wholesome without looking like God had blasted her with bad skin. The whole room smelled of jasmine. Oh no, 
I, we went from, oh my God, goldfish dress to Tarantino. Sorry, Tarantino. We didn't have, listen, okay. I'm not trying to kink shave. If that's your kink, understood, that's fine. But to just speculate about the softness of a woman's feet when they're wearing just their nice little goldfish sundress. Plot twist, she doesn't have feet, she has goldfish fins, she's just repping her own like half hybrid mermaid body. It's the way that it's said too. I can tell that the soles of her feet be so fucking soft. Like, <laughs> Um, also freckles are adorable. I don't like how he had to turn it into, but too many freckles make women look like they have bad skin. I think freckles are so, so cute. I think women with lots of freckles are cute. I think women with some freckles are cute. I just think freckles are cute. There's no reason to tear down our girls with lots of freckles. I'm sorry, this is girls building girls, not men writing women as freckles bad. Okay, now I'm being a little dramatic, but I could feel like if I had freckles and I had a lot of them, reading something like that, being like, oh, damn and my feet aren't even all that soft. I love this subreddit. It brings me like a different level of joy. Oh, also I got a comment last time that was like, something I hate about these videos is it takes the books out of context. Um, I'm sorry, in no context am I going to accept the soles of her feet would be so fucking soft. I'm not accepting the context, I don't care. Like yeah, most of the time context matters, but this is a fun little subreddit video. I'm not going to sit here and read all of these books especially if the context that I do get is fucking weird. <laughs> Her voice was as smooth as perfume oil. Oh, I actually really like that as a descriptor because it's giving like her voice is feminine, it's soft, like perfume oil. I kind of like that descriptor. Her eyes shone like stars in the night. Her body was a feast for the eyes. Often when she walked along the road without self-consciousness, her breasts swaying jauntily like two ripe fruits in a breeze. This sucks, because I actually was enjoying the descriptor. I was like, this is a good descriptor. I'm seeing her, I'm understanding her. She's soft, she's beautiful, she has a nice, lovely voice. She, she doesn't have self-consciousness because she understands her beauty and is confident in it. And then we have to go straight into the breasts. Swaying jauntily like two ripe fruits in a breeze. Now, this is my problem often with breast descriptors, is if you're gonna describe a woman's breasts, I understand we're trying to get into what a character looks like. And if you feel like it's important, that's fine. Give us a small descriptor, you know, whether you are gonna give a quick size descriptor or whatever, that's fine. But it's always written in a way where they either want it to be like super poetic or they want it to be hypersexualized. And in this one, he's trying to take that poetic route. There is no way I am like reading that and seeing what you mean because one, that's just not how breasts work. So that's like a weird vision men have of breasts that doesn't actually really exist. And while you could use like a fruit or something to, to compare size or something like that, just saying two fruits jauntily like swaying in the wind. I'm just imagining two fucking oranges levitating going and that doesn't even like resemble breasts like when you walk. That's not what they look like. Breasts don't sway in the wind. <laughs> like I really don't mind body descriptions, but do it in a way that makes sense and isn't over-sexualized or oddly poetic that makes no sense. Lying on her stomach close by the water's edge was a woman in her early 20s. My eyes targeted shoulder-length brown hair and a white thong that was wedged so deep into the crack of her yoga-firmed buttocks that it was nearly <laughs> invisible. The bikini top that barely contained her dark baby oil breasts was unhinged, preventing tan lines. I need a moment for this one. I wasn't preparing for it to just abruptly get so weird. At first I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, woman at the beach, obviously he's gonna say something a little out of pocket. This is not what I was expecting. A white thong that was wedged so deep into the crack of her yoga firmed buttocks. If somebody ever referred to my body as yoga firmed buttocks, <laughs> I'm running. I also often feel like when men write sentences like this, they think they're a compliment. While, while like, oh, she clearly could do yoga is a compliment. It's the way that it's just so yoga firmed buttocks. I'm good off that, thank you. Um, also, can we stop using like baby oil as a descriptor for shit? It kind of reminds me as when people write women as looking so innocent and frail and fragile and baby and small. It's like sexualizing the innocence of a woman and it's always really uncomfortable. I feel the same way with like baby oiled or anything that has to do with like young 
children in comparison to women and I understand like baby oil is like a thing but if you're gonna do that can you just leave out the word baby it's just so weird and uncomfortable and I see what they're trying to do because I'm so used to the innocent frail girl who's technically 23 but I'm gonna refer to her as girl and innocent and small because she remind me of teenager like that shit is so creepy and overdone as well. <laughs> this is a scene from a show and it said, could I please have some makeup? <laughs> and she's lying in the hospital bed. And she's, I don't know what show this is. This could have an actual context because I, I have no clue. I don't know what she's going through, right? But if you're laying in a hospital bed with an IV and a nurse currently looking you over and having to put the blanket over you for you, I can only imagine you're not in a great place. You're not doing well. You're probably pretty sick if this is the visual we're being given. And she's like, main concern, I look a little pale. Maybe it's from all the blood loss from the car crash. So um, I'm gonna need my blush stat because my hubby will be visiting after his work ends to make sure that I'm not dead. If somebody knows the actual context of this one, I do want it. Because look, there's even flowers in the back. So obviously she's been in the hospital long enough for people to have visited and been like, oh, this is bad. We should bring her a gift like flowers so she has something to look at in her time in the hospital stay. Like with all the context I get from this, she's not doing well. She looks like, she doesn't look too mangled, but she could be missing feet right now for all we know. Tarantino could have stole them. Wait a second, I just, I just realized somebody uploaded, going back to the feminist, you know, that the women are ruling. There's a summary we missed. Let's get into it. The story that had to be written. So timely, so frighteningly possible, you won't believe it's fiction. Reminder, this is 1992. Take a look into the future. Women now rule the world, or most of what's left of it, and their world is not a pretty place to live in. Men have only been reduced to mere cattle, good only for procreation. The feminists are working to eliminate even this strictly male function. Men must get permission to make love to any female, even if she is willing, or the penalty is death. I'm sorry. Before we keep going, I'm gonna definitely break down that. Must get permission to make love to any female, even if she is willing. Why would you word it that way? Even if she is willing? We're all seeing the problem with that, right? Even if she is willing. Meaning that's not what he was talking about in the first place. Ooh, that is the exact, that is the exact kind of man I would expect to write a book like this. Oh, the penalty is death. Good, good. I don't know, sounds, sounds sick to me so far with how you're fucking acting. Follow one man's story as he is hunted for just such a crime. In desperation, he stumbles upon the hideout of the subterranean people, others like himself, both male and female, who have broken the law of the feminists. Hiding in abandoned subway undergrounds, this group of gallant and desperate people wage a war to overthrow their enslavers. Oh my god. So this is basically talking about the feminist movements of the 1990s and how this man is like, the feminists are taking over. And I also like how he says that this is, this is so shockingly real. This could happen like soon. Bitch. It's still not great in the US, but if we're talking the world, do you know how some countries treat women? Answer, not fucking great. So, um, the, the world, like as in, as in earth, the future or what's left of it. Because woman in power ruin world. Any woman in power, very bad. This man must have fucking lost it when the elections were between Hillary and Trump. Like the fact that a woman was so close to being president was probably like his absolute downfall. This man must have been having a heart attack. If you guys want me to read this and review it for a video, please let me know. Cause I, I am open to that. It doesn't look very long, which is why I'm open to that. I love reading, but I know I'm not gonna enjoy reading this, but I will read it and annotate it and, and I will tell y'all what I think. If you're interested, just let me know. Do you know how to kiss a girl? Then learn. Stand facing her. Great start. Do not tell her your intentions. Do not ask permission to kiss her. Look dreamily into her eyes. You may hold her right hand in your right hand if you wish. What happens if you do it with the left? The world implodes. The world gets taken over by women because it's, it's beta as fuck to use your left hand. It is well to sigh a couple of times about this stage of the game. Whisper softly that her rosebud lips remind you of Cupid's bow. <laughs> she will probably drop her eyes and blush when you say that. Mm. Place the fingers of your left hand under her chin and tilt back her head slightly. What if, what if you're a short king? 
Draw her gently towards you, do not hurry. Gaze deeply at the love lights which slumber in her eyes. That just reminds me of Pennywise and like the, the, the light. Sigh once more. Incline your head towards hers until your lips, but wait, do not kiss her until you know that she uses Listerine peps and gum. It's a gum ad? Banger of an ad. I mean, obviously I knew that this was gonna be older, but the fact that it's a fucking gum ad. Okay, let's, let's try, let's try their rules. Sorry, I gotta read the rules as we go. <sighs> Your rosebud lips reminds me of Cupid's bow. <sighs> <sighs> I can't, okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, no, moving on. Kimberly was long-legged as well, with firm, sculpted breasts and a glowing tan. Her nipples were already erect. Okay, great. This is another thing I've noticed about men writing women, is they often seem to think that, how do I say this without this video getting taken down? That when women are excited, that's when they are their nipples erect when in fact it's typically due to stimulation, whether that's a stimulation that somebody else is doing, they're doing to themselves, or a, like a change in the weather or like something brushing against it. That's what it typically happens. It's not like popping a boner. I went all that way to sound more sophisticated and not like dirty and then I said popping a boner. Okay, nice. I've had a lot of experience getting the facts out of people. It was the wrong thing to say. Her mur mirth, her mouth turned down at the corners again. Her bosom changed from a promise to a threat. The feminists are at it again. <laughs> it's like that scene from Austin Powers with the fembots where the nipples just turn into the guns and start like fucking spraying. That's what I'm imagining. See, this is another problem I have when I read like authors like this, is they're using the wrong body parts to talk about what they're trying to get at, right? Cause like what I feel like he's trying to say is probably that he was kind of like flirting with her, I assume, kind of wanted her and it was seeming like maybe like she wanted him back, like she was flirting back or something. And then he says the wrong thing and she no longer wants him. That's what he's trying to say. But instead of using her eyes, her body language, her vocabulary, anything but, he's using her breasts, which once again, doesn't make sense physically or metaphorically, in my opinion. I will be moving on. You guys remember that thing we were just talking about, about men using children vocabulary to describe women? Her breasts, small and childlike. That makes me want to throw up. We already talked about why I hate that. I jumped the gun and talked about it on something else, but we're really, I'm glad that, I'm not glad, but like having that there to prove exactly what I fucking meant. That is exactly what I meant. It's so weird. Stop doing it. You just look like a creep. Um, there's a couple more in here, but honestly, I don't want to anymore. I think that was enough. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. If you want any of my socials, they'll be down in the description. If you like the video, please like it. If you want to, subscribe. Uh, tell me, tell me which one made you, um, want to hurl the most. For me, it was probably that last one because it was just so direct with everything I fucking hate. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah. If I take Creep Show uh, and hold it against the screen, it looks like I said bye.